this is concept e classes and today we'll deal with chapter 10 of class 8 ncrt social and political life 3 law and social justice so as we have said unit 5 economic persons of the government it consists of two chapters we have discussed chapter 9 in the last video in this video we'll be dealing with chapter 10 law and social justice so first in this chapter we'll see an introduction of why government makes such laws to protect people from exploitation we'll see how these laws are carried out by the government and to what extent they provide social justice then we'll take the case of a bhopal gas tragedy and then we'll see how the government enforces the safety laws and along with the safety laws we have other new laws also to protect the environment so that's what we're going to study in this chapter So first let's take the simple case of a common shirt market. In your class 7 you might have studied about the story of a shirt, right? It consists of a chain of markets starting with the production of cotton which is a raw material here and then it ends with the consumer who is the buyer of the shirt in the supermarket. So in each of these steps buying and selling take place and everyone in this chain they does not benefit equally from this. Do they? no because the weavers or the workers they receive less profit than the retailers in this case i think the retailer would get the maximum profit so many people which are directly or indirectly involved in the production face exploitation or an unfair situation in the markets markets everywhere they tend to be exploitative of the people whether they are workers the consumers or producers so in order to protect the people from such exploitation the government makes certain laws and these laws they try to ensure that unfair practices are kept at minimum in these markets so let us take a common market situation where the law is very much important this is the issue of the workers wages wages means salaries private companies contractors business persons they normally want to make as much as profit as they can so in order to get such profits they might deny the workers their rights and not pay them wages uh, for instance under the law it is illegal or wrong to deny workers their wages so in order to ensure that the workers are und not underpaid or they are paid fairly the government has made a law on minimum wages and a worker has to be paid not less than the minimum wage by the employer and the minimum wages they are revised upwards every few years so just like the law on minimum wages which is meant to protect the workers there are laws that protect the interest or the rights of the producers and the consumers in the market as well now these laws they make sure that the relation between the workers the consumers and the producers are not exploitative but merely making laws is not enough the government also has to ensure that these laws are implemented this means that the law must be enforced or carried out now enforcement becomes even more important when the law seeks to protect the weak from the stock for example to ensure that every worker gets fair wages the government has to regularly inspect the work sites and punish those who violate the law and when the workers are poor or powerless the fear of losing their earnings often forces these workers to accept low wages employers know this very well and they use their power to pay workers less than their fair wage so in such cases also it is very important that the law are enforced so through making enforcing and upholding these laws the government can control the activities of individuals or private companies so as to ensure social justice and many of these laws they have their basis in the fundamental rights which are guaranteed by the indian constitution say for example the right against exploitation it says that no one can be forced to work for low wages or under bondage similarly the constitution lays down that no child below the age of 14 years shall be employed to work in any factories or mines or engaged in any hazardous employment but according to 2011 census over 4 million children aged between 5 and 14 work in various occupations including the dangerous one in 2016 the parliament 
amended the child labor act 1986 banning the employment of children below the age of 14 years in all occupation and of adolescents 14 to 18 years in hazardous occupations and process it made employing these children or adolescents a very cognizable offense a cognizable means an, it is a clearly a clear offense to employ these children and anyone found violating this ban must be penalized with a punishment ranging from a jail term of 6 months to 2 years or a fine of 20000 to 50000 rupees and the central government had asked the state government to develop plans to rescue and rehabilitate the children who are working so these laws they have their basis in the fundamental rights as well now how are these laws carried out in practice or to what extent do they address the concerns of social justice so that's what we're going to see in the following slides so let's understand this through the case of bhopal gas tragedy so this bhopal disaster was the world's worst industrial tragedy that took place in bhopal 24 years ago the union carbide uc and american company had a factory in the city in which it produced pesticides at midnight on 2 december 1984 methyl isocyanate or mic a highly poisonous gas started leaking from this uc plant after this the surrounding areas were filled with white clouds and people started running away from their homes within 3 days more than 8000 people were dead and hundreds of thousands were maimed maimed means some of their body parts were permanently damaged the most of those who were exposed to this poisonous gas they came from the poor working class families out of which nearly 50000 people are today too sick to work among those who survived many people developed severe respiratory disorders eye problems and other disorders children they developed peculiar abnormalities as well but this disaster was not an accident the uc union carbide company they had deliberately ignored the essential safety measures in order to cut cost or save money much before this disaster a gas leaking incident took place in the plant where a worker was killed and several others were injured so this uc company they have deliberately ignored these essential safety measures but even though there was evidence pointing to the union carbide company as responsible for the disaster it refused to accept the responsibility in ensuing a legal battle the government represented the victims in a civil case against union carbide and it filed a 3 billion compensation case in 1985 but it accepted a lowly of 470 million in 1989 now the survivors they appealed against the settlement but the supreme court said that the settlement amount would stand later the uc stopped its operation but left behind tons of toxic chemicals these have seeped into the ground contaminating water then later the dow chemicals the company who now owns the plant refuses to take responsibility for cleaning up the surroundings 24 years later people are still fighting for justice today also the people are fighting for ju- justice for safe drinking water for health care facilities and jobs for people poisoned by the uc they also demand that anderson the uc chairman who faces criminal charges be prosecuted now in order to understand the events which led to this bhopal gas disaster we first need to understand why a factory was set up by the union carbide in india now one reason why the foreign companies come to india is for cheap labor wages that the company pay to the workers say in usa they are far higher than what they have to pay to the workers in poorer countries like india and for lower pays the company can get longer hours of work that is these workers they get lower pay but they work for long hours and additional expenses such as uh, housing facilities for the workers are also fewer thus the company can save cost and earn high profits and other than this these companies they relied on many dangerous means in order to cut cost say for example lower working conditions including lower safety measures were used as a way for cutting cost that is the workers they work 
in lower working conditions for very long hours where the safety measures were regarded as well other than this in the uc plant every safety device was malfunctioned or was in short supply between 1980 and 1984 the work crew for this mic plant was cut in half from 12 to 6 workers and the period of safety training for the workers were usually for 6 months but that too was cut down to 15 days and the post of night shift worker for the mic plant was abolished so in such methods the company did cost cutting as well now a report based on the comparison between a uc plant of usa and india states that at the uc plant in west virginia there were computerized warning and monitoring systems installed however the plant in bhopal it relied on human sense and manual gauges in order to detect gas leaks the virginia plant it also had an emergency evacuation plan ready however this was non existent in the case of bhopal so why are there such sharp differences in safety standards across the countries and even after the disaster happened why was the compensation to the victims very low why let's see the answer now the answer lies in what is perceived or recognized as a worth of an indian worker in india one worker can easily replace another since there is so much unemployment in a country there are many workers who are willing to work in unsafe conditions in return for a wage and making use of this worker's weakness or vulnerability the employers ignore safety in workplaces thus even so after many years after the bhopal gas tragedy there are regular reports of accidents in construction sites mines and factories due to the careless attitude of the employers enforcement of safety laws so as a lawmaker and enforcer the government is supposed to ensure that the safety laws are implemented and it is also the duty of the government to ensure that the right to life guaranteed under article 21 of the constitution is properly followed and not violated so if this is the case what was the government doing when there were such violations of safety standards in the uc plant actually at that time the safety laws were very lax in india or very it was not very strict and the existing weak safety laws were not enforced as well so let's see more about this so at that time the government officials refused to recognize the plant as hazardous and allowed it to come up in a populated locality when some municipal officials in the bhopal objected that the installation of mic production unit in 1970s was a safety violation the government insisted that the state needs the investment of bhopal plant and moreover this bhopal plant provided jobs to many people according to the government it was unthinkable to ask the union carbide company to implement safety procedures or cleaner technology the government inspectors they also continued to approve the procedures in the plant even when there were repeated incidents of leaks from the plant which made everyone sure that there was something wrong here so this case is actually a contrary to what the role of law making and enforcement agency should be instead of protecting the interest of the people their safety was being disregarded both by the government as well as the private companies so with more and more industries being set up by both the local and foreign business in india there is a great need for stronger laws protecting the workers right and better enforcement of these laws new laws to protect the environment in 1984 there were very few laws to protect the environment of india and hardly any of these laws were enforced the environment was treated as a free entity and any industry could pollute the air and water without any restrictions whether it was a rivers or air or ground water the environment was being polluted and the health of the people was disregarded thus not only the uc was being benefited with lower safety standard it didn't have to spend any money to clean up the pollution but in usa this is a necessary part of the production process so the bhopal disaster brought the issue of environment to the front 
several thousands of persons who were not associated with the factory in any way was greatly affected because of the poisonous gas leaked from the plant so this made the people realize that the existing laws though they are weak it only covered the individual worker and not the persons who might be injured due to the industrial accidents so in response to the presence from the environmental activists the indian government introduced new laws on the environment after the bhopal gas tragedy henceforth the polluter was to be held accountable for the damage done to the environment and the environment is something that the people over generations will share it, it could not be destroyed merely for development and later the courts also gave a number of judgments upholding the right to a healthy environment as intrinsic or as natural to the fundamental right to life in subhash kumar versus state bihar of 1991 the supreme court held that the right to life is a fundamental right under article 21 of the constitution and it includes the right to the enjoyment of pollution free water and air for the full enjoyment of that life and the government is responsible for setting up laws and procedures that can check pollution clean rivers and introduce heavy fines for those who pollute the environment as a public facility we have already studied about public facilities in the last video so a clean environment is also a public facility now in recent years while the courts have come out with strong orders of environmental issues this sometimes have affected the people's life for instance the courts directed industries in residential areas in delhi to close down or shift out of the city several of these industries were polluting the neighborhood and discharge from these industries were polluting the river yamuna because they had been set up without following the rules but while the court's action solved one problem it created another what was the problem because of this closure many workers lost their jobs others were forced to go to far away places where these factories had been relocated recent research of environmental issues in india has highlighted that the growing concern for the environment among the middle class is often at the expense of the poor for example the slums need to be cleaned as a part of cities beautification drive or as in the case above a polluting factory is moved to the outskirts of the city and while this awareness of the need for a clean environment is increasing there is a little concern for the safety of the workers themselves the challenge is to look for solutions where everyone can benefit from a clean environment one way this can be done is to gradually move to cleaner technologies and processes in factories and the government has to encourage and support such factories and it would need to find those who pollute this will ensure that the workers livelihoods are protected and both the workers and communities living around the factories also enjoy a safe environment now emissions from the vehicles are also a major cause of environmental pollution in a series of rulings from 1998 onwards the supreme court has ordered that all the public transport vehicles using diesel were to be switched to compressed natural gas or cng as a result of this move air pollution in cities like delhi came down considerably but a recent report by the center of for science and environment new delhi shows that the presence of high level of toxic substances in air this is due to the emissions from car which run on diesel rather than petrol and a sharp increase in the number of cars on the road so if you notice these ships by the breaking of ships or by the leakage this also creates environmental pollution advanced countries are relocating the toxic and hazardous industries to developing countries to take advantage of the weaker laws in their, these countries and keep their own countries safe south asian countries particularly india pakistan bangladesh they play host for industries producing pesticides aspartos or processing zinc or lead now ship breaking is another hazardous industry that is growing rapidly in south asia the old ships they no longer in use and are sent to shipyards 
in Bangladesh and India for scrapping. Now these ships they contain potentially dangerous and harmful substances and thus this also creates environmental pollution. So in this chapter we understood that the laws are necessary in many situation whether this will be a market or office or factory so as to protect the people from unfair practices. The private companies, the contractors, the business persons in order to make higher profits their practices such as paying the workers low wages, employing children for work, ignoring the conditions of work or ignoring the damage to environment. So a major role of the government therefore is to control the activities of the private companies by making, enforcing and upholding laws so as to prevent unfair practices and ensure social justice. This means that the government has to make appropriate laws and also has to make sure that these laws are enforced. Now laws that are weak and poorly enforced can cause serious harm like the Bhopal gas tragedy. Now while the government has a leading role in this respect, people too can exert pressure so that both the private companies and the government act in the interest of the society. For instance, we have seen how people have pushed a public cause and the courts have upheld the right to healthy environment. Likewise, the workers' right, which is the right to work or right to fair wage. So, these right is also an area where the situation is very unfair even today. So, people must demand stronger laws protecting the workers' interests so that the right to life is achieved for all. So that's all for the last chapter of civics. Thank you so much. May God bless you all. Take care and bye-bye.